Welcome Douglas County. My name is Kelly Robinson and welcome to District Dialogue 2021. Uh, this is our third episode this year. As you know, we do these three times a year. And this is my culminating episode. Uh, what you're gonna hear today is uh, a state of the district. Uh, I filmed it a couple of weeks ago. We went live with Facebook for the public. But this is sort of a reprogramming of them because we think it was important. Important messages that need to be highlighted. Some of the policy things that I've sort of advocated during this particular uh, first year of my, my last term. In addition, we talked about, we alluded to a couple of budget things. We talked about um, some questions that you guys had, que had questions about, specifically property taxes, uh, what happened with our legal services, and a couple of other things. We think it's going to be a great show. Um, it's going to be candid. It's going to be honestly Kelly Robinson, as you know. But it's something that I believe that you all should, should look for in your elected officials, which is the truth of the matter. That's what I entitled it. So with that being said, stay tuned for District Dialogue, District 2, Kelly Robinson. Welcome to Douglas County. My name is Kelly Robinson, the commissioner of the second district. Welcome to the state of the district for 2021. Um, I had to take a moment of a pause just now to, to think about where we are um, in America. Um, some of the recent verdicts that just came forth lets me know that America is, is going to be okay. Um, I have a conversation to have with you tonight. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the indifferent. We're going to talk about the past, the current, and our future. Um, it's a conversation that's been coming for probably about, what, 13 years. Um, it's something I've been thoughtful about, and how do I have a conversation of truth with my citizens? For those who have never met me before, my name is, again, Kelly Robinson. Um, I'm in my fourth term, you know, born in Cleveland, Ohio, moved down here when I was younger, and of course, um, you know, grew up here in Douglas County my entire adult life. I'm gonna mark that for 1990 for a reason, 30 years as an adult. I'm gonna to relate to my citizens about how long you've been here and, and your voice being amplified and being heard. So as I get into this story, I've got a couple of guests that's gonna join me here in a minute, but I, I first wanna give greetings to everybody that's paying attention. This is being shared across a couple of networks. I wanna thank Douglas County, you know, what's happening for beaming this. I wanna give greetings to my fellow commissioners that are watching this. Madam Chair, I'm sure that you're out there. Commissioner Mitchell in the house, thank you, sir, for all that you do. Commissioner Carthen, you know, of course, um, Ma Madam Ann jones Gatter still have to acknowledge District 4. Now, as a fellow commissioner, it's one of those where, you know, my role is different than Madam Chairs, which you guys always have this conversation about. I am not the executive branch. I'm a legislator. You hired me to go down and do a check and balance, so I need you to think. For those who've never seen me talk before, you've got a president and you've got Congress, right? You've got a governor, you've got the General Assembly, you've got a mayor, you've got a city council, and of course you've got a chair and the commissioners. My job is to check and balance. And 13 years ago, probably exactly almost um, four terms ago, you guys swore me in for the very first time. And what was important to, about that is that I am not a lifer. I didn't grow up in politics. You know, I grew up in corporate America. You know, I finished my entire corporate career in 11 years flat, from a customer service rep to running a four and a half billion dollar portfolio. I worked in four countries, Madrid, Spain, London, England, Hamburg, Germany, Tokyo, Japan. I've taught at Georgia State, the fourth largest urban university in the nation. I teach the six, six to sophomores, entrepreneurship to juniors, and of course the strategy capstone, capstone class. But what's key about that is that when I, when I took my oath, I, I purposed to, to sell myself out to my citizens. And so um, for those who never heard me, but uh, I'm gonna have a conversation with District 2 because I'm gonna let you in how I talk to my citizens, how I represent their interests. In other words, I'm here to serve as a fellow servant. I serve. I'm not here to be, look at me, look at my title, look at my vice chair. That's all symbolic. I'm here to represent the interests of the people. My job, when I took that oath and decided to go down there, I had one week to qualify. I made one decision, forever changed my life. It's like, look, I'll go do it. I'll go fight for your interests. 
So for the first time, and again, remember in the first two terms I was in the minority party. Second two terms I'm now in the majority party, so I've had a, an interesting experience. I've been on both sides. So this is important, so when, when you hear me make my decisions, and we're gonna talk about some decisions here soon, about, about how I render them, it's always gonna be from a certain perspective. Yes, I am a centrist, but I lean left. I am a Democrat, yes. Yes, I'm a minority. Yes, I'm a male. All those things. But yet, I'm responsible for everybody I serve. Uh, just recently, we've got um, notice that we received um, the redistricting map. Ron, hey, I got the map. Uh, just wanna let you know. Uh, and we're gonna be working on that. We just got it this week. We're gonna go, I'm chair. Thank you for my fellow peers to make me chairman of the redistricting map. Because it's all about your voice. This redistricting is something that's very important, right? It, it, it helps us facilitate federal dollars down here based on your qualifying, based on certain demographics, certain um, community block grants. It's all about your voice, the concentration of minorities. One of the things I've got to help Douglas County get over is in, its insecurity about diversity. That there is a mixture of us here. And some of the commentary that we get, it, it has to be, I need you to smile, guys. I need you to be okay with that, that there are different voices. One is not subordinated to the other. But anyway, this time last year, when you guys swore me in, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about my swearing in speech, um, some of the things that came up. But we talked about a few things that were important. We talked about policy. So one of the things I wanna just cover real quickly is that my job is to hear things that you, that your smiles and cries, my job is to go advocate on your behalf. So one of the things that we worked on is a policy dealing with everything from, what do you want to sum up, committees, we work on policy regarding pur purchasing, um, quickly. Uh, for example, we have, a lot, we have a lot of conversations about people out here who um, are vendors and they're wanting access to Douglas County. Now for 130 something odd, 40 some odd years, what was happening is that the contracts were going to the same old people, them 13 families. And I came in office and I watched how the movie, was, how the money was flowing. It's like, oh God, look at how that contract is being awarded, how that contract is being awarded. And it was being awarded with, with, with these set of invisible rules. And it was difficult to try to like, okay, well, wait a minute. Why is that same firm getting the same thing? Why is the same people in the same jobs? This county was locked. By the time I get through with today, which is probably gonna be in about another 43 minutes, you're gonna know why I'm here what my role was. When I came on board, I committed to being a change agent, not a maintenance guy. So when I came in here, I began to look at certain things and said, okay, let's change this. I don't wanna do it that way no more. Now please don't get up, don't misunderstand. I am not an autocrat. No, I'm not the chief executive. I'm just a legislator. If I can get to three, that's where it's gonna go. That's important. In other words, I've got to proffer up things that my fellow peers will agree to, or in fact, they proffered up and I agree with them. This is important. So I'm helping you understand that, 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 that that's important as a legislator to represent your interests. So District 2, you sent me in, what did, what, did, what did I campaign on? And it's not a campaign speech because this is my last dance. This is simply giving you an account for what I did in the past year since you swore me in. That's important. Right, so we talked about that. One of the other things I wanna highlight uh, that you thought was important was street lights and bike lanes and sidewalks. I mean, think about it. It's one of those where you guys know my story. I won't be, um, go back over that. But again, you, you, you know, I'm legally blind and I have to walk. I, I'm, I'm gonna talk about Uber, don't worry. I'm, go, I'm gonna get to that. I know I'm coming. And you know, it's one of those when we talk about sidewalks and those are things when citizens have moved over here from Cobb and Fulton or moved from other areas, they didn't just grow up here. They said, Mr. Robinson, we like it slow out here. We actually like the bedroom community. But can we get some street lights? Can we get some sidewalks and bike lanes? I said, yeah, I'll be right back. So I set off. I brought, what, bike lanes to Riverside. Street lights, expanding. That's important. So in other words, I'm not just one of those, those guys that are politicians who talk, you see the manifestation of my fruit. So District 2, you see sidewalks. I mean, one of the things, let me just give you a quick example and I'll move on to my next point, is that Maxim Road, right when we did the spots, Maxim Road, we had um, a pedestrian to vehicle accident. It was two o'clock in the morning and you had this family that grandma's watching the kids and uh, you got a teenager, you got a youth, middle ager and a young one. Two girls and a boy, and they want to get outside, and they're going to go get some candy and stuff at the local grocery store. And it's two o'clock in the morning. Now, grandma's asleep, mama's at work, and so they sneaking out and going to go get some candy and chips. 
When older system runs across and she makes it, we talk about Max and Road, the old from Cobb County, right? So what happened? The younger kid, so like the middle, she, she held and like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Runs out there, she pauses. We had a situation. So watching the older and the younger, watching their middle sibling was tragic. As soon as we heard about that, what did I do? It merely put on a very next meeting that we're in our, our, our transportation committee meeting was to deal with that as far as an operation, safety. Just this week, I'm proud to report that Maxon Road has been reconstructed. We thank the state of Georgia for helping us with that. Thank you, Miguel Valentin. You know that was important. I mean, it, was already, it wasn't really on the list. It was the fact that we had, I was able to advocate something to make it a priority to put it on the list. That was a responsiveness to something that happened. Same thing at Riverside. We had a pedestrian vehicle. Now, what's important for you to understand when I, when I say when I'm advocating for things like street lights and sidewalks, because Douglas County was rural. It was country. When I moved out here and lived off Lee Road, it was, it was nothing but cow pastures. Publix didn't even exist. So when you think about District 2 and, and think about the different characters, District 1 is what we call country city. It's dense. It's the city of Douglasville. It's our county seat. We know what that looks like. District 2 is sort of that suburban, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing but truck traffic. Right, I'm the economic engine. District three, we get it, the water basin, we, we get it, nicer homes, they, they, you know, ni they, what, 98% of, of district three is all residential. I'm 50%. District four, none but rural. Very, very different character areas, so we have different attitudes in how we approach this. So I'm moving on, and when we talk about those things that are important to us, I mean, we talked about the policies. Okay, I, I, I can talk about that all day long, but we've got some things that we're working on. I want to talk about housing. We recognize that housing is something that's important. I've, I've been championing um, more apartments. We don't have enough. Right? But we're talking about nice apartments with amenities and clubhouses where I live at and stuff. I mean, swimming pools. I mean, I got one of the most spectacular clubhouses more than some of these, these larger home communities. I mean, just beautiful. Right? They're different needs. My kids don't want to live in a big house. They're like, look, we like apartments. We like, you know, the, the whole live, work, and play. It's a, it's a different atmosphere. So it's important that I have housing options that are compatible with everybody from different stages of life. My mom just moved out of the house and she downsized. By the way, mom, I'm hoping you're doing okay. I hope you're in bed with Allie, your new calico cat that you got from the shelter, and that you're doing well. I'll check on you when I get done with this. But, but you guys get my point, is that Douglas County, is, it's, it's unique. It's unique. And so you got housing options that people are changing. You know, everybody's either growing up, dealing up, or they're dealing down. Some people have it because of affordability. Some people have it because of, of your job, whatever the case may be. But district, you know how we do it. In other words, like, no, we've got a little bit of something for everybody. I also want to talk about, you know, this thing I want to talk about. Um, we talk about roads. Roads, roads, roads. And I'm, I'm going to not belabor the whole need of, of us being able to coordinate our infrastructure, but for the past 30 years, just in my generation, I've looked at these roads, and I used to live in Mount Vernon subdivision. And oh, by the way, Mount Vernon had never been resurfaced in the history since it was built. I moved in in 98, so some of you guys know when that came online with Great Thorn. We just had a report um, delivered from our consultants yesterday that said that basically it would take 40 years for us to get to, to resurfacing your subdivision based on our current appropriations of dollars. Out of our $100 million budget, we spend roughly $2 million a year on transportation. So I need you to follow my math for a second. Our annual budget, just for easy math, $100 million. And we only put $2 million per year into that. Now, now how am I going to resurface 773 center miles with $2 million a year? This comprehensive transportation study that they did, they did a, a very nice job of sort of quantifying how much it would take for the next 30 years for us to bring ourselves up to par. They said it would take roughly $773 million for local match. Now, if I got to take $773 million and two to goes into that, that's what, 300, what, 30 years? It would take me 30 years and $773 million. But our spouse and David will probably help me remind me we do about what? Two million a year, we generate about 25 million a year. I can't get there even if I wanted to. So what do we do? How do we deal with that? For District 2, for me, and this year, for our little small allocation, this is important. 
For District 2, I chose to take my little six miles of, of, of mileage, and as opposed to doing the normal maximum roads and lead roads, et cetera, I decided, uh, with my own discretion, as each commissioner can, is to resurface subdivisions only. All right, so Brook Mount, Mount Vernon, and Graythorn, in this upcoming cycle, all of you will have your subdivision resurfaced. Another campaign promise that was fulfilled. Because that was important, because you said, like, well, Commissioner Robinson, we're appreciative, but when, when we come out of our driveway, it's all about curb repeal in effect. I mean, we got HOAs that are on us. We're going to talk about HOAs in a minute. We got HOAs, we got all types of things, but, 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 but what are you doing about these roads? I gotta make sure I don't step off this stage. What do you do about these roads? I had one citizen and one of my community said, Commissioner Ross, you've been talking about that jail and $150 million and stuff. When are you gonna do something about them roads? Well, you know what, that jail costs 150, you know, I could have done what, at least half the roads with that alone. But you get the point. This is about priorities. This is about what's important. So for District 2, what did I do? I went out and I advocated on your behalf. You want the street lights? There they are. You want bike lanes? There they are. You want opportunities for procurement? Oh, we've created an atmosphere. I mean, thank you, Commissioner Carthen from the third district, who in her very first term created a, a policy that allows us to expand and look at what we call disadvantaged business enterprises. And, and David Good, who was the facilitator of that, we appreciate that because it was something that, okay, let's break this up now. We we'll appreciate the status quo, and, and please, I'm, I'm talking to everybody. And we, we'll maintain the status quo, but it's important to expand it as well. It's not gonna be when, when, when minorities have an opportunity to participate in something and you hear an opposition vote said, don't you put your hand, like, okay, don't, don't do that. It's about being fair. It's about being equitable. It's about giving people opportunity, right? Get, give them an opportunity. Give everybody to be competitive. Stop with the do it, dealing your same friends, the same thing. But up until this point, Douglas County, everything was done through invisible rules. Nothing was codified. We just make these things up as we go. And it was like, okay, that's enough of that. That's not fair. And so we began to stabilize and normalize the things that were important for this county. Just to make sure that everybody felt included. Everybody should get a plate. Everybody. Everybody should have a chance. Everybody should feel a part of it. Because when the fundamental industry, you know how I am, one of my fundamental issues I had about being elected is I see these 12 families that almost pretty much rule this county. And 100,000 of y'all have no clue of what's happening here. I mean, you got, I mean, I'm gonna get into this in a minute. Y'all know I'm coming. You got these 12 families that are pretty much are controlling this as if it was still rural of Douglas County in 1946. Oh man, who gets on boards? Who gets these? Who gets in the room? Who gets to the chamber luncheon? Who gets to this? And it's like, okay, it's the same four, four, four 500 people. And it's like, well, what about the other 150,000 people? I have a problem with that. And so one of my job, my, 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 I, I purpose this. I said, I don't want to be part of that. Right? Which is what my, my attitude said, like, I want to be with my citizens. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to do that. I don't do a lot of ceremonial things. Like, no, I'd rather be with my citizens. Right? I, I, I do my listening post. No, I want to be with my people. Take off the princely robes. No, I don't want that. Let me go down here where the people are. Let me hear, what, let me hear their hearts. Let me hear their cries. Right, so that was important for me because again, I looked at this and this is, this is what I'm about. This is what you hire a change agent. I am not here to, to be liked. I'm here to be, you know, I'm here to celebrate my citizens, like what you need. I'm just here to serve. I don't have any political aspirations. I don't have a career path that I'm looking for. Look, I just sat, I signed up, said I'll go do it. But I'm making a difference. And I, I'm, I'm talking about me for a minute, but I'm gonna talk about the county in general because we're doing a great job as newly elected officials, a new leadership group. The Democrats are killing it. Oh, don't get it wrong. I'm gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about this money in a minute. Because again, my, 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 my concern is that I'm, I'm feeling a spirit like, guys, Doug's gonna get over your insecurity. What, what, be, be proud of what, oops, sorry guys. Be proud of what you're doing. Be, be, be proud of like, guys, we just stabilize this thing. I, I've yet to wait for somebody to come down here financially to can have a conversation with me and say that any financial decision we made is, is not, not solid. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about, let's talk about the money for a second. Because I think that's important. When I came in this county, we was going through the, what, the Great Recession. Put the jail aside, y'all went and spent that money on that thing while everybody was asleep. You bamboozled the people, that was, that was just, that, that, was, that was suspect. To the leadership who put that on there, it was suspect. And you overbuilt it. 
Y'all yeah, know how we do in District 2 now. That thing, it was overbuilt. That thing, it's still 60%. It can hold, what, 1,700 people. And they barely have been over 600 people in all the years that we've had it open for the ensembles going on a decade. This thing will be dilapidated before you ever fill it up. And we talk about spending. Now that's waste. Well, we can talk about Uber and $18 to get me down here to be able to be accountable for this, but then you're gonna sit there and be silent about something that you overspent by 40 million. All right, okay, I'm gonna keep going. I, I got, I'm, I'm on time, I'm rolling here. But let's talk about this budget. Because again, from a financial perspective, like this was important. That's my background. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at our peers, I'm looking at our financial. We're, we're great accountants, but we, we weren't very good at, at forecasting. And we were setting these, but these annual budgets based on emotional and politics of the moment. I just watched them. I'm just one vote. I can say what I want to say, but it's just like you, everybody else has to agree. And if they don't, they do what they do. And so I watched us, in, in, uh, you know, during the Great Recession, they raised the millage rate by what? 24%. Now, y'all didn't say nothing back then. Think about it. Y'all going through the Great Recession. You didn't get a bailout. You lost your houses. Texas County is built on what? 40% of our county are renters, not apartment. And so there's a false narrative that goes around sometimes. So I got to give some education. Says, okay, you guys went through this, and, and again, they built the jail during the Great Recession, and then they raised the rates 24 percent. You had no bailout. Oh, okay. The biggest raise in the history of the county. Not recently, but I'm gonna come to that in a minute. Get your facts right when you draw a comparison. It'd be perfectly important that you know what you're talking about. All right, so you raise the rates on them. All right, so you raise it, we set the rates where it's supposed to be. I challenge like, okay guys, get what you need. We had no growth, low growth, no growth. We get it stable, then they decide to go and start spending again, spending money on animal shelters, five million dollars, and it's like, oh gosh, y'all killing me. It needs to have use, but I get it, okay, just don't go in debt about that thing. Now watch them do what they were doing, so think about it. Then we began this policy about rolling back. Now, anybody want to have a conversation with me about this rollback? You, you, I, I'm on the third floor down here. And that is the most flawed thing that you could ever do. I'm going to explain to you why. Think about if your budget is $90 million. You got expenses of $90 million and your revenues are $90 million. Just stay with me just for a second. So that $90 million. So annually, you grow, what, 1% per year, maybe two, but let's just say it's 1%. So you got new growth, new revenue up, so now I'm up to what? 91, okay. But you turn around and set your expenses, your budgeting process based on expenses. Ooh, you set a budget for 95. But your revenue is 91. Now the state allows you to keep, uh, get inflation to set your budget to make sure that your revenues are equal. Your revenues and expenses. So that's, there's new growth and there's inflation. So that inflation component that's automatically set raises you up to the 95. But y'all being the political non whizzes sit there and start rolling back the inflation back to like, okay, you upside down. Now you having to take out the fund balance to make up that hole. And when you do that, one year, two year, but you're steady raising your, your, your expenses, you're setting your budget based on expenses, and it's going up, but you keep rolling back, you're taking the new growth of the one to 2%, but you keep rolling back to five and 7%. Eventually what, you go, you're upside down, you're down 15 million. Right, now I'm warning saying, guys, stop that, stop it. But again, on one vote, it doesn't matter, Kelly, you, you, why don't you tell them, why don't you like, guys, I can't order them. We all are sovereign. Everybody is sovereign. They make their own decisions. Now I can tell you that, that now look, my math ain't the smartest thing. I'm just saying that, look, I can count. I can't see, but I can count quite well. So it's a fake narrative to anybody believes we need to keep rolling back when you're naturally getting get expenses that are going to inflate just for taking care of your employees, which we haven't done. Just for taking care of your roads, which you haven't done. What we did is pretty much operated as an interest only loan. You took care of nothing but yet you steady spending. Oh, no, don't get me wrong, people were getting raises. I mean, you know, what did we do, Commissioner Rich? Oh, oh, at least, what, the, them judges and people come in there in that executive session and we, we spotting them quietly. Nobody gets to see it. Uh-huh. Other people roll up in that executive session. Oh, they getting spotting their raises. Uh-huh. Nobody's advocating for their employees. Oh, you know I'm coming. Y'all get real convenient. 
This is about the whole truth of the matter. Oh, I'm doing good on time. Oh, I'm doing good. I need you to understand the math. Right, so here we are. We roll back, what, one year, two years, three years. That was part of us taking over leadership as Democrats. I got to keep it where it belongs. So the Republican-led rolled back three straight years. All right, that, that cost us about $6 million. Then we took over and we rolled back two more years. That's $9 million in two years. That's $15 million that you roll back in, in inflationary. But your expenses are going up just through national as well as inflation. Who, 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 who teaches math like that? It's illogical, but if you get caught up in a political game that you're trying to cater to a certain uh, a, a group of individuals, and that's my challenge, it's like, okay, who y'all listening to? Like, why, why are you listening to citizens that, that you, they're, they're causing you to fail? So here we are, we're rolling it back, and then all of a sudden, like, okay, guys. So here we go, we got this last in 2019. I'm gonna shift it and bring up one of my guests here in a minute. But in 2019, this is important. All right, so this is 2019, this is pre-pandemic. Somebody asked questions, well, how do we get here? Why did y'all raise what you currently did? All right, so here we are in 2019. And we knew it was, it, it wasn't last year. This is 19, we're like, okay, guys. I'm, I keep telling them, like, guys, it's getting tight. Y'all gotta stop. We're at the bottom of our policy. We're down to 10%, like, okay, stop. Like, let's just hold off. We got the spots going, we're good. So it was decided that by the executive branch, as opposed to holding for that budget cycle, they decided to, to, to grow the budget by six, almost 15 million, eight times new growth. What the? Now, I don't know, I, I mean, maybe David Good can help me. I think Jim Pluckett back in 1983 could throw a football 99 yards. Okay, we got it, the Raiders, I get it. But you can't throw something eight times revenue. Even Mr. Pierce, one of my citizens, I think, I hope he's doing well, who brought up doing our, our public hearing two years ago, this week, said, I don't know what type of math y'all doing, but how y'all gonna do that? I said, no, I know, I know you, Mr. Pierce. They not listening. There's no way you can throw the ball that far or kick it that far, but it's like, okay, that's the, look, it's called the majority. I'm gonna get into that in a minute, how majority decisions are made. All right, I know y'all sometimes say, well, Madam Chair should be leading. She's like, okay, guys, I got it. All right. I'm going to run this 80-yard route, but I know I'm going to make this slant and I'm going to have to come back and get this thing. Like, okay, you're not going to make this. You're not going to make it. But okay, I run my route. Now, you know, we, we approved the budget. Like, okay, eight times new growth. I'm running my route 80 yards because I know I got to break off that slant, come back to the middle and catch it at the 50-yard line. You ain't going beyond the 50, but okay. That means you're about, what, 50 yards behind. You're five million behind, but okay, I got it. Well, the pandemic hits which saved us. That's the truth of that decision that the pandemic hit, so as opposed to the tub being flooded, the whole community, the whole neighborhood is underwater. That saved us, that was a, a, a very bad decision. Right, so I gotta tell you the truth of that. But we got through it because the pandemic hit, so then now we get bailout help and everything else. And I, I wanna talk about this because with that policy decision, what did we do as a board? I wanna come back to the very beginning. It's like, okay, that's enough of this. We'll never let any administration ever get away with having expenses beyond revenue. So thank you to our financial advisor with Terminus who helped us craft the most, the, the most brilliant fiscal policy ever in the history of this county. And it locks it up. In other words, we ain't even gotta be there and it's like, where y'all going? That was important. Right, it's about, it's about maturity, like guys, what are you doing? You can't run a county this way. But, it, but it's okay guys, I'm, I'm, I gotta deal with the heavy stuff because I'm gonna get to the positive stuff, but that was important because those things that are matter to you, that we made a decision such as that. But again, which one is it? Who's leading, who's doing what? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just one vote. But I can count, and I'm saying guys, do the math, you, you're, not, you're not looking at reality. And this is sometimes about elected officials, sometimes it's when we get into what I call that star chamber and it becomes, it, it's like it does corrode your thinking. It's like, okay, you get so, I'm this, I'm, I'm, I'm just this, this almost a demigodish type of attitude. Like, guys, y'all not using logic. And you, you're abandoning reason. And, and you're trying to cater and you're, you're doing theater and kabuki and it's like, guys, you go out to hurt the lives of 150,000 people. What are you doing? You're, you're, you're giving them relief, but you're raising expenses and at some point that's going, you're gonna call that note. That balloon is gonna get done and they're gonna feel it. 
So unfortunately, this past year, when we had to put that fiscal policy in place, we had to raise the military rate. We had to fix some historical. Both administrations are responsible for it. It's the policy about the rollback. Don't roll back inflation. I know Commissioner Mitchell is working on that. Thank you, sir. Continue to go down that path and work with the state to sort of deal with that. But in the meantime, guys, we had to correct some things. We had to get on a stable footing. But again, thank goodness that the feds came along. And they bailed us out unlike the last administration, which um, allowed us to get through this. So now, here we are, fast forward. We, we, we got it stable. We got the policy in place. So now we got a budget. Now we're saying that your budget cannot go beyond, your current expenses cannot go beyond your revenue. No, you can't use revenue that's not reoccurring. Forget all the fake math and all the manipulation of the spreadsheets and stuff. We stabilized it. So now we're solid. So here we are a year later. And so now we're just going through our current budget process and I think we're doing good. $100 million budget really is about 104. You know, 104 in revenues, 103 in expenses. We gotta, we gotta go argue and debate over about a million dollars. We've gotta sponsor certain things. But what, what's important to note is that we, we, had to, we had to raise that rate. And I know my citizens, District 2, I know those fixed income, I know. Now, 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 I won't argue the fact that, okay, what did we do with the relief that was given? Because the problem is that's on us. It's, it's sometimes when you're in leadership, you knew better. You can't blame it like, like, like when they talk about the, um, the Great Recession and too big to fail and the housing, y'all shouldn't have took those houses and y'all, like, no, I come out of banking. It's called moral hazard. You, you should have known better. In other words, guys, y'all are giving them relief. And so they're getting, they're getting used to that relief and they're, they're not adjusting themselves, but don't, don't get all righteous about that stuff now, right now. You're setting them up because now you gotta put that balloon on them. And that was wrong, unfortunately. And so we asked for your assistance and we had to fix that. It was wrong, but we fixed it. And so you shared in that and so now we've corrected that thing. So now we put it back where it originally was. So the 23% that we raised it against the 24 last time, it pretty much was what it should have been. In other words, my point was stop tinkering with the millage rate. You're not the feds, you're not good at this. And you're hurting the county with that. You're showing instability and your capacity to be able to put a monetary policy in place. All right, so we fixed that. So now I'm at my turn. I'm on the back nine now. So with that being said, I mean, this, this was, this, it's, it's tough. District two, it, 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 we did some, some tough things, but we had to correct some things because here's my problem. Why wasn't that in place prior to us coming on board? Where, where, where was our financial counsel prior to our current, our effort to bring somebody in? Where was our legal counsel? Where, where, where were some of the other things that should have been in place that, that, that would have helped us put some boundaries and some guardrails in place? I mean, I mean, uh, unfortunately, why am I the guy that having to write my own policies, right? So we, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about our, 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 our county attorney um, situation shortly. But right now, I just wanna pause for a minute because I'm gonna continue to talk about this budget, but we're gonna come to that. And I'm gonna invite David Good up here right now because David, I wanna also you know, make sure that we keep it back to what the citizens are here for, which is not only what I'm doing, but actually what they can see tangibly what has come to pass regarding them. So can you come on up, David, and join me on stage here and let's talk about uh, some of the things that are always dear to your heart, the SPLOS and stuff, and share with citizens regarding District 2, man. What, what have I done for them? Lately. Well, with the SPLOS, you know, we have a lot of things going on. Uh, one of the big things that we just finished up was actually over at Boundary Waters, putting out the acti new activity center. Uh, we spent a little bit over $7 million on it. Uh, we started off being budgeted around $8 million because of different things, the inflation and pricing, but we were able to get it done for a little bit uh, around $7.5 million. So that's one of the things that we got done not too far from New Manchester. And right now we are getting ready to build out some sidewalks. So those kids that's over in New Manchester, they across the street, head over to the park, head on over to the disc and disc office and everything that's going on over there. So 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 we got we got this this mega complex. Yes sir. Mega sports complex. It's got eight sports. What we got? Let me make sure I get it right. <laughs> Football, baseball, soccer, equestrian, aquatic, basketball, disc golf. 
walking trails. Right. Oh, yeah, and don't forget about uh, pickleball. Oh, pickleball. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. indoor. That's not with the pickleball. But, yeah. Okay, but I get it. Right. But, but to the citizens, we've got this mega park. Now, I've got citizens who came to the community center on, on, on ribbon cutting who didn't even know that we had 500 acres back there with all these other parks and, and stuff. So, that's David, great. what are we doing from a tourism perspective? Do you know anything that's going on in parks and rec that we can help people sort of become, get more visibility about? Look, guys, this is a mega park. All right, so when I came in office in 09, you hadn't even fit, you hadn't had, you didn't have a football field, soccer field, community center. Did, so six out of the nine things he just mentioned has been built in our tenure. Right. Now why didn't y'all finish that? What did you do with the money? If I spend $100 million a year in the annual budget times 13 years, that's $1.3 billion. You had two spas, 2002, 2009, 2016. That's another, what, 125, 150, yes, 450 million. Okay, we're going to talk about the money and who getting fed in this thing in a second and stuff. And so, but again, you know, seven and a half million dollars for this community center. And so, uh, what it, what's in it? Tell me what the, the bigger things in it. The, the basketball courts. Um, well, there's two basketball courts. There's two. Uh, yes, basically, where if you ever been to a college game, it's about the size of uh, those college ones. There's actually a walking trail upstairs, mm -hmm. and you also have a workout room that's overlooking on the second floor. So it's two stories, yes. and it's, of course, there's ADA compliance. So there is an elevator there mm -hmm. to get people up and down. So. You can either run up the stairs or you can actually take the elevator and get it up there. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I mean, the community something is something that we, you know, I'm going to go back to. Uh, again, I've got to make reference to the, the, the jail spas, which was passed in 09. The spas ran from 2010 to, what, 2005. So here we are. Commissioner Mitchell was on board by then. And one of the things we saw was while we were in the minority, we were like, they're not doing anything for the citizens. Now, Republicans, I get it, guys, but I, I get the self-preservation. I get me and not that and all this and how we want to do it, but, but man, that's too much taxation, man. You didn't take care of the roads. You got these old buildings that are d dilapidated. You didn't even take care of your employees. But you get self-righteous about raises for a couple people. I'm gonna deal with that in a minute. But, but something like this, this was important for Commissioner Mitchell when he had to focus on the seniors and I had to focus on our, our youth. In other words, can we do something for the citizens? It's great to have a $150 million jail, but, but I, I get for, for, or a $5 million animal shelter for 80 cats and dogs, or uh, this jail for 600 people, but what about everybody else? Their tax dollars are being applied, whether they put in a dollar or hundred dollars. When can they look at their when can they look at their roles and, see, and experience their tax dollars? So this was really it, it, it was a policy shift on every level. That's what I set out to do. Now we gotta break this up, guys. We're we're not serving our citizens. That's too much money, and they have nothing to show for it. You got all these parks, and I don't want to get righteous about, well, these parks are bad. You ain't like, what have you been doing for 30 years? Look at these roads since I've been a youth. What have y'all done? But yet, we got it. Senior Center? Tell me about the Senior Center real quick. Well, the Senior Center, of course, is across the freeway over there in District 1. Uh, what they have there is they actually have a swimming pool inside of it. Uh, citizens decided they wanted something that was different than what he fight. Yeah. So therefore, at one of the community meetings, actually out in District 2, that was when the citizens came up and said, hey, what are you going to do for the seniors out here? So that was one of the things that I believe, at least I know that both you and Commissioner Mitchell actually advocated for was to say, hey, let's get a community center, let's get a Senior Center. In that Senior Center, not only do you have a pool, you also have a work out room. You have a place to do arts and crafts. Yeah. You have a place to do meetings. Yeah. You have a nice little library in there. Yeah. And then at the same time, you have a large multi-purpose room, just like you have over at Boundary Waters. There's a nice place for family reunions, to a place to go yoga. There's a lot of things that you can do, as well as a walking track. You walk around it four times, it's, it's a mile. Wow. Yes, sir. So that's for seniors? Correct. Pickleball, walking tracks, they got a swimming pool so I can take a lap, or it's the waiting? It's the It's the waiting, but you can take a lap, but you want to take about four times to get a full lap. No, I get it. Okay, right. so for our seniors, so again, one more time, judge, you know, and this is important, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it twice. You know, I'd rather for you guys to judge us in light and condemn us in darkness. That's important. In other words, you know, judge me by the fruit that we're doing. Right, not what we're talking about doing this stuff. Like, no, we got real manifested fruit on what this administration is about, because guys, at the end of the day, it's about serving our citizens. I only do what my citizens ask me to do. 
I don't come like I've got this big, you know, I'm, I'm this, you know, this, this shaman. I don't, I don't speak down to my citizen. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to go do? So you said you wanted street lights, you got them. Bike lanes, you got them. You, you wanted walking trails, you got them. You wanted a community center, went and got it. Uh, you wanted a senior center, my, my guy came on board. What about my, my, my commercial guys? What are we doing regarding commercial? You know, Thornton Road is the economic engine right. for this thing. Yeah, I, I get them all. There's some thoughts. The mall is changing. It's evolving. I can come back to that later. That's in the city. I can't get into that right now. But, but, but that Thornton Road corridor and all the things that's going on, tell me about that. What are we doing for our commercial residents? Because they pay property tax too. Right. What are we doing regarding that? Uh, one of the largest things that we're doing right now is actually building a new fire station. Um, it'll be fire station number 90. It will probably be one of our largest ones. Where is that? Where, um, that's going to be over there on Douglas uh, Hill Douglas Boulevard. Boulevard. Douglas Hill Boulevard. Douglas, Douglas Hill Boulevard and um, SR6. Uh, for everybody else, it's Thornton Road and um, Camp Creek Parkway. Okay. So therefore, we're building that. Um, it could end up fitting, hopefully, about 45 people. It, it depends on how many people per shift. That's, going, of course, going to be a policy thing. And then at the same time, we're going to actually put a QRV, which is a quick response vehicle, a ladder truck, which costs about $1.3 million. Plus, we're going to put another fire engine around $5.5 million, and then, I'm sorry, $550,000, and then also an ambulance. So if it's a four bay, those are four vehicles that will go into that um, into that location. And at the same time, right down the street at fire station number six, we're actually uh, putting a new engine in there. So we just went out for big, have a truck coming in. So one of the new trucks we're getting, we'll go over there to fire station number six to help the citizens as well as a commercial out here in uh, District 2. And at the same time, we are doing something about Riverside coming on to SR20 going uh, towards I-20. Um, that area right there, there's a pothole, there's issues that's sitting there, so that's one of the things that we will be uh, taking care of as far as the spot stars are concerned. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, David. And stuff. And so, uh, again, we want, I want to thank David Good for being here. But again, I just, I can say it, but it's best to have somebody else to validate some things. You know, the District 2, we're all about manifesting fruit. My only commitment to you is like, I, I'll do what you ask me to go do. And that was my commitment. And so, uh, that being said, I, I think it's something that's important for us always to recognize that hold your elected officials accountable. Everything's questionable. I'm going to bring uh, Wendy Cottle uh, up here in a very in a few moments uh, to, to fill some questions, some, some direct questions that we've been given from time to time, because I think that's important. All right. One of the things we get, we sometimes get, is this conversation about why do commissioners have district eights? And I think you guys got to recognize, especially to my teachers out there, you got, you got 30, 40, 50, maybe 20 something students. How do you keep up with that? Even me, when I was uh, when I was a part-time instructor at George State, and I got 45 students in this thing, and, I, and again, unless you're a, a tenured, you got a PhD, then you don't get a graduate assistant. You got to keep up with that. Now, how do I mean, think about my pastors out there with these, these mega churches and stuff with, with, with 20,000 and 30,000 parishioners and stuff, like, and they got to they gotta serve them and keep up with them. I got 37,000 citizens that are up all times of night. Everybody doesn't go to work during the day. Now, how am I going to keep up with that? Come on, pastors. How are you going to keep up with 37,000 people that you're really there to be a, a servant leader? How do you really engage them? Now, I know some political allies out there or, or, or political foes who say, well, you know, don't talk to them. Don't, don't measure. Don't ask. That's going to waste money and stuff. Like, no. We ain't done with that. That's a false narrative. That, that's like, like, no, you got to connect with your citizens. Get out there. So we had to put an infrastructure in place that allows us to best serve them. Most of my peers work full time. Usually in elected life, you don't get to get at this level of, of, of government. I mean, again, you got the, the superintendent that runs the school board, city manager pretty much runs the cities, but up here, it's the board of commissioners, right? So it's a board. But most of the people, I mean, when I came on board, everybody was gray head. Everybody's retired. I was the youngest at that time as a commissioner. At 42, I'm no longer the youngest, but I'm the oldest now as it relates to term. That's important. Because this sacrifice, man, these guys got stuff to do. They got a little bit more time. I, I got a diff different lifestyle. But that's key. How are they going to keep up with this and really serve? How are they going to do that? They need support. My citizen called me at, at, at 9 o'clock in the morning, Commissioner, I'm 90 years old and I, I'm tired of all this. I got to be there to serve them, not the next day, not three days later. Are you really committed to listening to your citizens or is it just the fact that you think you, there's some that translate the fact that when we talk to them, that's going to translate into money? Commissioner Robinson, we don't really want you connecting, especially with your base, because then now you're going to be redirecting resources over to them and not over to us. Like, y'all got to get over that. Now, who's ever in my district I'm going to take care of? But I got to deal with that false narrative. Don't do that. 
Don't do that. Everybody get a plate. Everybody get a plate. Right? You got a need? I got a guy that could not stand me. Oh my God, Madam Chair, you remember that the guy, you know, didn't talk to me in that meeting in your office stuff, pretty much called me every night. I wanted to just ignore me. But I want you to slow down the traffic on, on Riverside Highway. And like, okay, well, you know, Commissioner, you know how we do it. Well, it's still going to come to me, but okay, I'm going to let you go ahead and have your moment. Right? In other words, like this dude, no, could not stand me. But I'm a neighbor. Oh, hated my guts. But you know, I'm still here to serve. Like, I'm secure, man. I was raised by a wonderful mother. Like, you got me twisted with the wrong guy, wrong generation, but I got this. So the very next meeting, as everybody knows, I put it immediately into committee and put that, and immediately within the same year, it what came to pass. So my point is that, I mean, regardless of, of how you may believe and what your ideological difference, in District 2, I, I, I serve. I really don't care. I'm not here to be liked. I don't need Facebook. All that cancel culture, that false stuff, like that, gone with that. That's, I mean, that's, that's the best y'all got. Let's talk about policy. Let's talk about some of those things. Let's debate the budget. Let's talk about those things. But the personal attacks, the things that you do, guys are doing, it, it really grieves me because like, okay, y'all can do better than that. It bothers me. Um, it, it doesn't, it's more like a righteous indignation. Right? And it's like, well, guys, y'all know politics is a contact sport. It hits back, right? Like, you don't want to poke the lion in here in the cage with you. Like, why would y'all do that? Like, politics is contact sport. But I'm saying, why are we playing like this? Why is it so sharp? Why, like, guys, stop, stand down. It's like DEF CON 5. Down, down, down civility. Thank you, Madam Chair. Down, y'all don't want this. Because you got two teams, and, and, and neither side it really has fear of the other. Please don't confuse it. To the point is, but let's get along. I've been in the minority. I know how to work with the majority. I, I, I love working with Commissioner Moore here. I was like, okay, Mike, let me go over here and talk to him. And, and we get into these big conversations. His door was next to me. He said, you, you know, you're, you're always demanding stuff. I said, well, you're always dictating. And we'd be like, we have a look. We just go off and we're happy. And we, see, I, I need some maturity. I need, I, I need some mature communication, some mature comments. I'm, I'm great, man. Tear the process up. Tear the proposition up. But the character stuff, man, that's some weak stuff, man. The way y'all talk down to the other elected officials. The things that you do. Like, it's so like, oh man, come on, man. I get freedom of speech and freedom of press, but we're neighbors, guys. We're not foreign countries. And I think that's weak. It's weak. It's really unacceptable, but I get it. Yeah, you can. We're going to keep moving, but, you know, maybe I'll say yes, maybe I won't. That's the power of the yes or no. Okay, let me get out your way. Right, so sometimes it's about your tone. It's not what you're asking for, it's how you're doing it. And we gotta shift this thing and, and, and care about one another a little bit more. And so I, I'm gonna do this right and then I'm gonna just get into a question real quick. And so Wendy Cottle, come on up. And I'm, I'm, I'm coming down on the backside. Is Wendy, where are you at? Wendy, come on up, Wendy Cottle. This cabin is called her name. We call her Wendy. My legislative aide, welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening. Good evening, Douglas County. My name is Wendy Cottle and I'm the legislative aide for District 2. All right, so, so we're going to do this a little bit different. So I'm sure there's questions and stuff out there. I can't see them. Y'all know I don't read Facebook, so we're going to do it this way. So annually, the Board of Commissioners, and we just started, so it's not annual. We started that we would pick a citizen of the year. Hint, hint, my peers, it's that time. Last meeting coming up. A citizen of the year in which all of us would duly respectfully get to pick that citizen that, that, that personifies our district for whatever that is. It's not a debate. It's not anything they get to say it. So since last year, citizen of the year was happened to be Miss Barbara J. Smith, we're going to field um, the questions that she sent in, and you're going to fire away. And I'm going to answer them as I, I flow. So Miss Barbara, thank you so much for your questions. And so Wendy, read away. All right. My property taxes increased by $160 due to the increase in the millage rate. What plans are you working on to assist retired senior citizens on a fixed income stay in their homes? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, think about it now. I get non-seniors who, 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 you think about what, $160, and that's what, 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 divided by 12 is 10. I mean, that's $14 a month, $15 a month is, it's expensive, right? It's fixed income. 
I've got it in my family. They, they, they have to manage their money and stuff. And so one of the things that we, we, that's important for us is that for that $160, when we talk to our citizens and say, hey, we're going to bring this senior center on, online, this youth center, it's going to cost a little bit more. Now we're going to have to raise, you know it's going to cost us. And so there was a, a cost factor in. So, so for our seniors who may have been exposed to that, yes, it was an additional cost, that $12. But at least for that extra increase, where, where, where did it go? It went to something that you asked for. But what can we do? I mean, I'd like to have that conversation with my colleagues. Say, can we go to the state legislature? I know we've got a meeting on the, what, the next week? Yeah. I'd like to talk about Commissioner Mitchell. I want to talk about some type of, is there is a homestead? Can, can we adjust it anymore? Have we optimized what we can give our seniors? Can we create a, 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 a new um, consideration? I'd like to do that. So again, let's give some more room. Now, it's going to cost us. But I'd like to entertain that. Take care of your seniors. It's, it's great that we're expanding services to make sure that they get their, they get their meals, they, uh, meals on wheels, they get their health. But no, I'd like to take a look at some legislation to be able to affect that. Because if I could do it as a lever to offset what we're doing, get the seniors relief, then, then, then that makes this more palatable. Those are the ones that truly are more impacted by some of the decisions that we made. I do understand, and I make a commitment that I'll look into that. Next question. All right, this question is about the county attorney situation. So she would like to know, why did you vote to give Ken Bernard, the, account, the county attorney for the past 17 years, a $65,000 raise and retain him as special counsel, then hire a new county attorney at $800,000? Y'all really want to know? All right, so let, let me tell you how this really went down. All right, so um, probably about two years ago, the Board of Commissioners, this is back in 19, my peers will hold me accountable, that we recognized it was time to change our legal services. Um, sometimes you just outgrow counsel. Uh, one of the things that our auditors, um, and again, this is what we're on about our third auditor, they, we have a best practice in Douglas County, which says that you know, those professional services should only get about five years, or else you'll get too common with them. Right? They, get, they become too common. Become too common, that's the words they use. So you always want to break it up. So every five years, you gotta put the RP out for the auditor of professional services like the attorney out every five years. Well, um, uh, but that wasn't a policy, that was just a practice. Um, and so we, we purposed last year to actually look into legal services, but we never did get around to it. But now I, I gotta speak to Ms. Barbara spe specifically from District 2's perspective. Kelly Robinson's vote. My problem is that I thought that our, um, I'll just talk about the firm itself became more of a power broker as opposed to being an attorney. Uh, almost like a sixth commissioner. It was too much influence and it wasn't giving us what we really needed. It was getting in my way. It was obstructing. It's like, I appreciate you're a Republican, man, but you got to chill that out. Right, don't try to turn me against Madam Chair, man, telling me I can sue her, don't do that. I had a problem with that. Just give me the law or find me a path forward. So we, we've had a couple of instances from, from, from black tourism, um, situation that we like, okay, so you, you're not helping the board, you, you being political. I had a problem with that. I had a problem with my Facebook. With, 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 thank you, Ms. Bohannon. She, she wrote this on, on my, 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 my well, on 3-4, that's when I had my, my fundraiser on, on 3 they, they sent me this notice saying that, hey, you're in violation of such such. I'm like, okay, I don't know anything about it. I can't see, I'm in between A's and stuff. And they sitting on this thing. So now the attorneys are involved. Like that now you, you didn't pass by, you've been given notice and stuff, now it's cranking in. So now, now at, at that time, let's say certain principles were going through COVID and so forth. I get it. But then you sat there and sent your partners in there. You got your paralegal telling me, well, Commissioner Robinson, you don't know what you need to do. You need to download all your Facebook. Like, don't tell me what I need to do. You got staff trying to handle me as a sitting commissioner. Lord, her mercy. You must be out your mind. Right, so I had to take that from them, like, oh, no, y'all ain't about to set me up. See, my problem with Douglas County, because you got these staff who believe that they're now institutional, where they, they will power like elected officials, and it's like, oh, no, I got a problem with that citizen. I got 35 citizens, look at 35,000 citizens looking at me, look at y'all do this. Now, if y'all knew this, like, Kelly, well, why are you dealing with that? Doesn't he work for you? Yeah. I mean, any vendor who's listening to me, would you try to cuss out a sitting commissioner? Would you talk to the youngest commissioner who said, the next time you try to get rid of me, you make sure you got three votes. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, so you're gonna punk the young commissioner? This is an employee, supposedly, a vendor. Oh no. So uh, let's do the math for a minute. So my, my problem is like, I'm cool if you would have been cool. Do the math here. All right, so here this person comes in 17 years ago. Do the math. Got about 10 years of experience. So think about this. So 10 years of experience over here for this person, 17 years ago. He's got about 27 years of experience. And let's say we got the person next to us who got 10 years of experience too. All right, you got two officials. One is an African-American female, young, same age at that time, and you got this other one over here. About the same age, same ascension, trajectory. Come out the gate 17 years ago, making 250 a year. Okay, that's 17 years ago. Let me do the math. So what? What? 17 times 250 is 4.3 million. Oh, but wait a minute. He, he, you know, we can't have elected officials. You can't have people making more money than the governor. Oh, you silent? What is one of yours? Look at the hypocrisy. Really, 4.3 million? Then there was school board council and the board of commissioners. At the same time, I'm up to six million. Y'all are silent. Don't include bond deals and everything else. My point is, look, I don't hate the player. I get it. I don't hate the player. So anyway, we fast forward, so like, okay, we gotta break this thing up. This contract is too egregious. It's too much around it. We don't want to do it. This is our second legal opinion. Like, okay, oh, let me get to why I made my vote, Ms. Barber. So here we go. And I'm working on this thing. Like, okay, well, let me go ahead and get a committee together. We got a committee of different elect uh, different uh, officials internally. We had Fred Perry, Tiffany Tutor, Sonia Compton, okay, me and Terenia, Commissioner Carthen. Oh, we went into this thing. Like, okay, we're going to follow the process. Oh, they were saying, oh, it's illegal. It's rough. No, no, don't lie. Oh, by the way, when we went through the legal, um, the, the legal opinion process, they realized, well, you didn't really even have to do that way. That was actually a great way. It wasn't invalid, but because the county attorney, y'all ain't got to do that. Oh, so what happened to that that was foul? Uh-huh, that it was, it was illegal? That y'all didn't know nothing about this? This was about my integrity. I'm coming, Miss Barbara. No, we did this righteously. We evaluated all the firms, one, two, three years. I mean, one, two, and three. We evaluated five firms, three firms. Okay, we did the oral presentations, and so that's what it was. So now we come down to the vote. Now, this is the moment. So here we are. You got two, two. Y'all remember the big debate? Me and Tarina was like, no, let's break this thing up as yes, Let's just go with what we selected. You got the other three, they just, they had difference of opinion. But they weren't together. They just all was landing on, we don't want to do nothing. Totally different. Like, all right, so you got, really, Madam Chair and Ann were really on one side and me and Trina on the other. Commissioner Mitchell was just sort of on the corner. He honestly was, you saw it, he's just like, okay, this is not gonna play out very well. But okay, you, you gotta take a position. So here we are, we're going through this whole fight and stuff. So guys, look, it came down to like, look, we kept stalling. You need three, it doesn't matter what. We need to change this. This is not in the best interest of the county. There's no way you can feed on this system. And don't talk about the 700 million, I mean 700, what, what, what was it? Seven million, no, 700,000 budget that was being fed to all the friends behind this that the Board of Commissioners never got to solve, ever. The Solicitor General was like, why y'all, y'all don't even know who, who getting this stuff? No, we just get a bill and stuff and this stuff just goes out the back door. They get to get, get that type of autonomy. So there was some historical like, okay, man, you breaking this thing off like you got equity. So it's just time for change. I, I get it, but I gotta be accountable to my citizen. So Ms. Barbara, I'm like, okay, so here we are. You got, we're divided, we're split. So here I am, I'm like, okay, this is not going, we're not gonna get nowhere. The three of them, they were the majority, they didn't have to do nothing. That contract was gonna re-roll back in automatically. Didn't matter how bad it was, did not matter, it was gonna roll back in. So then they said, okay, well, let's, let's, let's give a consolation prize. I'm saying, oh my God, Wendy was there. Like, okay, they began talking about a consolation prize and next him, like, okay, like, I get the contract. I get it, guys. But 300,000 special counsel. Oh man, I get it, man. Y'all giving him the job. That this dude's gonna get $26,000 to be sitting on the phone just waiting for us to call this on retainer. I get it. But okay, I, 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 I need three votes. I don't have three votes. So what do I do? 
walk in Madam Chair's office after our, you know, the day after whatever, the, the last election, the, not yesterday, but the prior election 30 days ago. I walk in the office, I'm almost finished, guys, because I, I need to get something out. So, th so I go into the office and I said, okay, so Madam Chair, we said cancel this contract, okay, all right, cancel this contract immediately, okay, install this, this person as this, okay, now this is what you said, right, okay, all right, now we're going to uh, award this contract to these guys and we're going to do it at this rate. She said, okay, Commissioner Robinson. Okay, I said, now, this is, you're the majority. This is what you said you want to do, right? All right, so for, for my vote, because y'all want to do that, I want this new county attorney at this cost. So my point was, it had to be compromised. Because my point was, I'm gonna change that attorney, period. All right, I, I, I hey, 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 hey I, I couldn't get all the way in. I mean, eight points versus three points, it is what it is. In other words, I couldn't change it 180 degrees, I couldn't change it 90. So I turned it, but I, 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 for the greater good of the county, like, no, man, you can't, you can't serve like that, man. You can't feed on this system like that. And when, when, when room, when other people want to come in, it, it's like, no, it was egregious. Commissioner Carthen, salute her. Stood strong, like, no, you do this, I got this. I, you, you stay over there. She did right, but no, wasn't nothing gonna get done. So it's one thing to protest, it's another to be able to affect the agenda. And sometimes you have to compromise. And respectfully, the board had to do what the board had to do. We will move on. We're fine. But please don't get it wrong. Yes, I had a problem with it, but sometimes that's life. Some of you guys are military. You understand war. You understand how things work. But in essence, to get it done, we could have kept stalling. The three didn't have to do nothing. They had a majority. Like, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not moving. And, and, and to see them in executive session, well, you go, you go. You figure out who's going to do the motion. I'm like, okay, get me out of here, guys. Y'all won't even make a motion. So it wasn't going to work unless I, Kelly Robinson, stood up, took the leadership, like, look, this is how we're going to do this. All right, so I put it down on the table. I said, Madam Chair, just call the vote. She's like, well, did you go talk to about No, you know I ain't talking to Ann. That's your job. That's your majority. You go do it. This is what I did. All right, so she agreed. She made some words. I gave it to Wendy. Wendy put this on their desk, and it went forth. So my point being is my vote was just to break the tie. It was like I had to push the three of them to action. We're going to break this up. They could have said no. It went forth like it was. So somebody told me, that Commissioner Roberts, you ain't got two votes. Well, I think I worked out with four. Don't never tell me what I can't get. That's, 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 that's to the, the cheap seats. All right, next question. Let's keep this moving. I got to wrap up. Yes, this is the last question because we're at time. Um, this is about the probate judge. Uh, Ms. Smith is concerned that the county is using taxpayer money for her legal fees. Can you give more insight into this? All right, that, that one I can't really speak to. Uh, and I'll answer this way, Ms. Barber, because that, that is an, an active situation um, as relates to our probate judge, and I'm not able to speak to it. But what I can speak to is a single point that was in the media talking about her payment. Now, just like with me, the Board of Commissioners has what's called public official liability insurance. Now, again, if you, if you throw a rock at me, I get to defend myself vehemently. Now I get to say, well, Commissioner Robinson, you spent too long. I didn't spend nothing. You can't pull a gun on me and think I ain't gonna respond. Don't get it wrong, Ducks County. You know that thing was foul. That was a little, I don't even use Facebook, but I got to defend myself and you cost the taxpayers $200,000. And there was no judicial decree. We settled it. Now in this matter, since we already had two people, public officials who already had used this, I was the third. And so it's like, okay, guys, this is like any other bill. I mean, you got the sheriff's office, they get in trouble for all types of stuff that because of deputies, we get sued, we have to get insured. We have to take care of that, that's that life. So here's what happened, not, not one more time, last story. So here we go, we're coming into uh, executive session. So now y'all know as board of commissioners, we sit there and we're like, okay, staff tells us that we need to go into executive session, personnel, litigation, real estate. So we don't really know until we get in there. So they tell us we got this situation. All right, we get in there, so we're listening. And they bring up this whole matter about this, this bill, I don't know, about $10,000. And um, you got staff, you got the county attorney, county administrator, all types of stuff, Matt Laverne, the risk manager, and they come in there with this narrative saying, well, we think that, this, that we need to do something about this, uh, that we can't really pay this, that well, really it's up to the board of commissioners. All right, so I'm like, and I'm listening to the story, and I'm like, wait a minute. This is my response, and Commissioner Mitchell will know it. I said, why are we talking about this? This is administrative. Pay your bills. They told me, well, this seems to be personal. I said, based on what? What have you read? 
And my point being is that you have staff shenanigans that plays politics. And my comment was, we're not about to get involved in this with Judge Emerson and Judge um, 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 Peterson with this war. We're not puppets for this old guard. So my, I, it was no consensus and to say how we do it. It's like, okay, county administrator, pay the bill. If she submits something that's wrong, that's fraudulent, then she has to deal with that. So we kicked it out. It's like, okay, remand that thing back down. That don't belong to us, and we moved on. Tell the truth, guys. Stop with these fake stories. That's my problem. Yeah, I know. I, I, I tend to be vocal. But you guys didn't know that. All right, so I'm gonna thank you, Wendy. We're, we're good to go. Where, where did Wendy go? I'm here. All right, I thank you so much. I'm gonna close this out. That's my last one I got. Thank you, Wendy. We're good to go. I lose her. She loses me all the time. All right, so I'm gonna close this out because I, I had to say some things. But in closing, guys, Doug is kind of beyond the politics, beyond the shenanigans. We're doing quite well. Don't get me wrong. All five of us, pound for pound, I'll take on any other commissioner. I mean, the problem that we have when we go, look, I was in Chicago on behalf of, I went to a dinner with all these um, chairs and stuff, Fulton County, Cobb County stuff. They had this, I mean, I'm, in, I'm sitting at the table with the guy that ran House, House Bill 170. I mean, there was Shirley Franklin, Cobb County. I mean, everybody in there, and we're talking about, you know, infrastructure and stuff. Then I'm out in Austin and stuff with the chamber stuff and those guys and what they're doing and stuff. And we're doing a great job and stuff. And we're looking at them benchmarking. And I'm out there watching these communities that are equal size, like, okay, guys, we're not very proud of ourselves. It's almost like we have an insecurity. Guys, you know how good we're doing? More than, more than Mercedes being and some Trust Plaza, what we got on Thornton Road, it's, it's just, we're killing it, guys. What we're doing with the Lee Road expansion and stuff, and thank you for that master plan and for that referendum for that TAD. And we're about to come online with this master plan community with mixed use and get all types of commercial. We'll say, guys, we're about to shape this thing and take it to a whole another level. In other words, be conscious about what we're doing. We're, we're tapping into what the citizens have to say. We're only responding to what we're doing, but sometimes we get so caught up in the politics that we don't know how to, to wield the power that we use. And so my job um, is simply, and I bring this full circle that I, I really do, I love my my citizens, I will fight for you. I'll fight for the people that work um, that work here that want minimum wage. I advocate for that. I fight for the sheriff's office. Y'all want a pay raise? I advocated for one back in um, um, what 14 for seven and a half percent. I'm advocating now for that 10 and five. I don't back down. Like, look, I, I'll work with you. In other words, like, okay, it, it's, it's too sharp, but guys, we're doing doggone good. We're killing it. We're very proud, like we're positioned. We got stable money. We've got a strategic plan. Thank you, Lionel Savage and, 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 and Lionheart, for what you guys have done for us and stuff and helping to shape your plan. Thank you, County Administrator. Appreciate your service. Appreciate what you're doing. Getting this organizational structure, find out where our true gyms were, getting the right people in place. We're doing an excellent job. But now we got to leave for the next 150 years. And, and while I, I promise you this is my last day, I'm going to make sure that we will make those policy changes and make sure that we make wise financial decisions that we're incorporating your choices and stuff. And guys, this is going to be a place that you're going to be very proud of. Why aren't people coming to Douglas County to benchmark us? Get my tourism going. Get my museum going. Get some attractions in here that will allow people to come up in here. Like, be proud. The board has held nothing back from anybody. Like, look, we'll spot you. Mental health, we got it. But come on, guys, let's work together. Let's tone down the narrative. Now, District 2, this is how I do. You know me for four terms. I am not Obama. That's not me. Uh, shout out to, to, to Andre Dickens. Yo, you know, Lana Mayor. Great. Not that guy. I'm just Commissioner Robinson from the 2nd District. I'll fight for you. I'll advocate for you. I'm that guy. I have nothing but love for you. I respect my peers. I don't, I don't mind going to battle. Uh, we, we learned how to coexist. Me and Commissioner Mitchell was like, no, don't let him be now. You got to respect his choice. And that's the thing about knowing about our decisions we make, no matter as, much, as mad as you may be, you respect their decision. They're sovereign in how they make their, their wielding. So with that being said, I share what I share from a place of passion, because there's some things that we need to get out. Citizens, it's okay. Just like up in the infrastructure bill, there's certain things that those congressmen, those senators, they don't like in certain bills and certain things happen. Hey, you can move with it or don't. But at the end of the day, you gotta move forward. So I'm asking the citizens, like, look, we're okay. We're in a great place, right? We're in the right spot. And I ask you to stay with us as we lead us going forward. I know there's some changes. Madam Chair will come out with her state of the, um, state of the county um, in the beginning of the new year. I've got some exciting things I've got bringing online regarding entrepreneurship and financial literacy. I mean, there's a lot of things that we're about to get going, but we had to get through that turbulent time, that time in which we had to sort of navigate. 
we had to sort of like, you know, it's called, what they call them, forming, norming, storing. All right, so we, we just had to get through that formula. New leadership like new money. We had to get used to wielding and driving the ship. We got that out the way now. We're about to roll this thing. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that, that's all I got. I mean, that was good enough. This was just a quick state of the district. In other words, District 2 is well taken care of. You can come look at my agenda at any time to advocate for my transportation committee. You can call me, reach me, call Wendy, reach out. I'll give you whatever answer you need. But at the end of the day, I really care about you. I'm committed to you. And again, if you judge me for what I can't on, I've actually done everything in my first year. I got three years to go in this last lab. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen of Douglas County, District 2, I want to thank you all for such, I know it's a little long, but I want to appreciate you for tonight. I had to say some things because again, some things are questionable. I only ask in love that we change our narrative. We begin to embrace each other and we begin to move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. What a show. Uh, that's the first time I watched that since I aired it last month. Again, Kelly Robinson closing out his district dialogue for this particular year. Hopefully it was entertaining, it was educational, and it was informative. Um, I took my time to connect with my citizens, as you guys know I do, to be real, transparent, and be honest. So again, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to reach out to me or Wendy Cottle, my aide. We're always available for you here in Constituent Services, but once again, have a happy new year as we now enter into 2022, and I look forward to serving you more. Thank you, and have a good night.